Good morning. It's Wednesday, October 12, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Living in Guilt and Anxiety, the Unsolvable and Unchangeable Presence of Hell. In our scriptures, Matthew chapter 6, with a good tax collector, Matthew writes about how Jesus taught him to pray. Pray like this, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. Don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Last year, I remember seeing a post on a friend's Facebook page. It went like this. When thinking about life, remember this. No amount of guilt can solve the past, and no amount of anxiety can change the future. It's not terribly difficult to see the deep truth of that plea to live in the present. No person can do the time travel thing that's popular on TV these days to go back in time and fix the mistakes so everything will be perfect. The few moments I spent writing those last sentences cannot be undone. Time is a one-way door through which we pass, willingly or not. Grieving over what transpired in that process has therapeutic value, but only in the sense that we can learn and then apply that knowledge for living in the next passage. This brings us to the second half of the saying, anxiety over the next passage, the future time of this revolving door we call life. Anxiety is a wrestling match over the outcome of desired versus undesired results of the present. We want good stuff, good feelings, friendly places, and an easier ride. Past experience tells us that there are precisely 89 bazillion ways that can go wrong. Truth be told, there are that many ways that we are our worst enemy. The future is unknown to us, and no amount of anxiety will help. It will only lead to stomach ulcers. I believe that's why forgiveness is the only real solution. To be forgiven by those to whom you are accountable and have transgressed, chief and primary among those is God, and then to forgive those who are accountable to you for their brand of transgression. Without both, we can get stuck. It's a choice we all make to move forward without fear or remain stuck in hand-wringing angst. Others, those against which you have transgressed and who, for whatever reasons, will not offer their forgiveness when asked, is about the only contaminating fly in the ointment of assuaging our guilt. But that is not, or at least should not, be a reason to hold back receiving the healing forgiveness God offers when others are too proud or angry to forgive. Getting stuck in guilt is a form of self-punishment. This thought can be, like any good advice or process, treated like a get-out-of-jail-free card or simply a mechanism to avoid the consequences of poor behavior or intentions. It's not intended to be that, or simply a convenient crutch to avoid the harder work of forgiving and being forgiven. The keys to this process of fleeing from the hell on earth of brokenness are honest self-awareness and destruction of our pride. The absence of either can derail any relationship. For you today, If we value our relationship with God, we must hold sacred our treatment of each other. The way Jesus taught us to pray was to ask God for forgiveness in the same way we have already forgiven others. That means the ball of offering forgiveness is always in our court first. When we refuse to acknowledge and enter the process of offering and then seeking forgiveness, we yield to the temptation of the evil one, our enemy, and the contest is forfeited. Game over. Hell continues to reign. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.